Hey man, it's the motherfucker 411 show. It's your voice of Tiva. We in the house, we in the building, we in the back. We on location. I'm with my boy Hood Loud Pat. Man, only hustlers know my name, get money in a drought. Yeah, the D. Only hustlers know my name. I'm with Riddy. Riddy's world too. Like Come bring your ass over here closer. Hold on. It's, it's going down. We on location, so it's going to be a little, you know what I'm talking about? So yeah, we in the building, man. We have a special guest. I just want to first give a shout out to G's First Studios for putting this in play for us. You feel me? We're in Avondale, Arizona. It's going to be a crazy night. Atlantis? We in Atlantis right now on the west side of Arizona. And we got a little easy in the building. How you doing? Pretty good, brother. What's happening with y'all, man? You know, making it work. You know, what I'm saying? I, I see that. Any means possible. <laughs> I see that. I see that. I like it. I like it. Put it in. So where y'all originally at? Then usually. Uh, we're, oh, we have a studio um, over at HKS Studios, RTU. Okay. Uh, we have a station. Okay, that's know, right. Not too that's far right. from here. Not too far, okay. Not too far, like 20, 20, 30 minutes? Uh, yeah, like 23rd Avenue in Glendale. Oh, wow, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Maybe uh, 15 minutes from here. Okay, that's right. You know what I'm saying? We could have had it there. I don't, know, I don't know if that was... You know what I mean? This is... But I mean, yeah, I was just wondering, because I see y'all put it together. Then the beautiful host, she can't even... Get in, so usually, usually in set with them. You all three of y'all. Yeah. That's that's what it is. That's, that's what right it here. is. It works. <laughs> that's team, right. man. We gotta make it work wherever we go. We gotta make it happen. That's you know what, what it saying? is, brother. So I just want to shout out OGT for you know giving us this play right here. You know what I mean? So shout out to him and Miss Margie. You know what I'm saying? So because this is a good is. moment Most right definitely, here, most definitely, know? brother. I appreciate Everybody it. Everybody gets to sit with you know the man himself right here. I appreciate you, brother. How, how do you want to be? Like, what, what should I call you though? When, when, when somebody yeah. meets you, what should they call you not to be? Ah, uh, man, you know, it's whatever they feel comfortable with it, but you know, usually Mr. Friends, Compton. <laughs> all of his aliases, you know what I'm saying? But little easy, little E. Little you know, once you get to know me, they should shorten it up, little E. Little E, okay. Yeah. Uh, I like that. I yeah. like that. That feels more this, natural. Right, right. I don't know how to, it's just kind of like, uh, uh. You know, step brothers when you're trying to hug, you'd be like, oh, yeah, hey, yeah, you know, nah, we going that close, we little E. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's dope. So, so what does Compton mean to you? A uh, little bit of everything, man. It's, 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 you know, what I mean, it's not only what my father put on the map, you know, what I mean, and let the city, I mean, the world know about the city. You feel know I mean? Um, I'm, I'm literally born and raised from that city, and just the fact that him as a father keeping me with his mother and father. And you know, a lot of people used to be like, "Oh man, you you, you grew up in the hills with them." Nah, I wouldn't visit the hills, but I was born and raised in Compton, and right. it just molded me to be the man that I am. You feel what I'm saying? In order, you know, to appreciate where I come from. You feel what I'm saying? To fight the battles. I always tell people it's like, it's like you know, what I'm saying the modern day Tarzan. You know what I mean? You take them out. You feel what I mean? The hood, and you bring them up to the the, the hills and next to the folks. You right. feel what I'm saying? If shit got bad, he can adapt to it. Right. Everybody else is shit. Go hang themselves. You feel what I'm saying? Or go through what we you know go through now which is you know god bless people's souls will go through a depression stage when we're going through you know a pandemic you feel what i'm saying as an individual of myself i feel like I, I adapt to every environment there is so it's like you know the modern day tarzan come from compton california because you know you come out of there and you you are able to live and strive no matter where you go you're gonna be all right quick question when you said they said that oh you grew up in the hills are these people that know you or are these outsiders? Oh, just every, you know, being easy son, you always got that, you know, he want to be like his daddy. So the days are the, the individuals that, you know, don't know no other form of hate. You feel what I'm saying? Or, you know, a negative opinion about somebody or, you know, something you want to depict because you, you know, from the outside looking in. So no, my friends know, you know, individuals that know me and grew up with me, they are, they'll tell you, Oh, he's, he's nice now. He's cool now. He's Mr. Hills now. But yeah, growing up in Compton, yeah. California, they, yeah, yeah. We say that now because Eric's changed. You feel what I'm saying? We know, you know, E, you know what I'm saying? They think they know you, right? Uh, as far as this is fans, this individual's looking in. But, you know, my friends, they just, they, it's, I'm a different, they know me. I was, I'm grown up. You know, being from Compton, it was tough. You feel what I mean? It's like, I, I jumped off the porch at 11. You feel what I'm saying? My father died, you know, March 26th, we buried him April 7th. I turned 11 April 23rd. So my mind drew to gang banging and, and messed up, you know what I mean, in life and stressing my grandma out and things I didn't know until I got older with my own kids and, you know, me and her talk. And she's like, you know, what? you know, I used to worry every time you left and you didn't, you know, it's the, the street lights came on and we hear this and that and the other going on. She worried. Do you feel I, like you going back to the street lights? 
after you know the father passed do you feel like that was to keep you close to your dad or kind of understand what he went through or is that just like rebellion because both go deeper into that both both brother it's a good question both um psychologically it was i was i was drawing close to him anything he did or you hear about him doing or rapping about as a kid you want to relate to that you know i'm his first son you know what i'm saying i'm eric wright jr so you know that's what i want to do you feel what i'm saying and and then you know what i mean that's just being a kid in compton you feel what i mean it's just kind of going to adapt to your habitat you feel what i'm saying this is what it is this is what's going on and you were you know younger when you know you know your father passed and stuff like mm -hmm. that did you pay attention to the media because i know a lot of people that don't know you guys like the world they have always something to say. Oh yeah. How, how did you take that as a young, uh, as a young person? I heard person? it all. Um, I think I was probably the one that took more lumping of it for all my brothers and sisters, to the ones that don't understand it and why I got a tough skin for it, because as a is a you know ever since I was young they was you know low key babies three, four, five, six. You feel what I'm saying? I was. You, the you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like you know I kind of went through that wave of hearing all every every little bit of thing that you can't hear or think or say. You know what I'm saying? Any, hatred they want to put towards you I got you feel what I'm saying so I got the tough skin for it and then you know as some of them get into the limelight as they got older when they were growing up it was tough for them to take you feel I me mean? that shit it still is you feel what I'm saying they still can listen to the shit that people want to sit here per se think about anything of with us as his kids his legacy what we portray what we do whatever you so the fuck you know what have you what? tried helping them out like when they went through that very much all the time it was you know like raising my own kids in a sense but they're my siblings you know and sometimes so, yeah. the kids don't listen to you too, you know like, oh they definitely don't listen try, to me. Oh, much trust advice. Me. oh they don't listen to me to this day you 100 is right they don't listen to me to this day you feel what i'm saying i got you know certain quarrels that you we have in in the months of siblings which is you know publicized a lot anyway you feel what i'm saying so you know i uh, love them all you know i mean wanted to work but you know what i mean it just being the first and the, you know the oldest it's just a lot of like you know yeah, I, I shit that falls on me you feel yeah, me? I, was, I, was, I was gonna ask kind of like the similar question you was gonna talk about sativa because you said you hit a switch you know and i know it's kind of hard to find your identity when you out and everybody judging everything you do the way you chew gum the way you walk what hat you wear so like it was a switch you said that you that kind of clicked when you was just like you know what i'm 11 pops passed away i'm hopping off the porch obviously that's the way most of the mentality from california especially for us young he's an 80s baby right yep. so our mentality the first thing to do is sell drugs pimp hustle that's what we figure is what we supposed to do i don't know why that's the mentality we had but that's not the end all be all oh not at all and then so like i can understand how identity or trying to even be family in the public light is hard to do mm -hmm. and so like you have to be an understanding person you have to have growth to be able to look at it from both sides of the story real talk now yeah yeah i give all praise to god for that but yeah growth is what happened you feel what i'm saying growth is what happened for that change but my man now but yeah you know back then that was just, again, that's just a life. We were brainwashed to sit here and do, but you know what I mean? Which I say about, you know, different homeboys, I have minds, but mine, I got a story to why I did the ignorance of what I did. You feel what I'm saying? And then you, you just grow up to change as a man. I have my kids, kids my own. You feel what I'm saying? You start living, you start, you know, making money in the means outside of the streets that, you know, you're, you, mean, you mean something, you are something, you have some substance to live for. So, you know what I mean? You got to turn that around. You feel like that also was to show people, like, hey, you know, nothing was handed to me. Like, everyone probably assumes. Oh, very much. They definitely you know, assume I can that. do this on my own, and I did it. Yeah, I now. definitely did it on my, you feel what I'm saying, my own. You know what I mean? Of course, it all, you know, all praise to God for giving me the father that I have. They gave me a lane to do it. What, how, which way of the lane of it is, like, you know, you, you having a father and saying, hey, I left this bag for you, and motherfuckers took it and took it away or stole it. But, hey, what I, what I paid left you a lane to sit here if you're smart enough go get it go get go you know what i mean go live life you know what i'm saying go do what you got to do you feel what i mean and then it was just representing him you feel what i'm saying just as far as the now you know what i mean me meeting g you know what i'm saying and do you know what i mean what i'm doing is all off based off of being easy son and going and most of the success that actually came is funny as i get older i look at it like you know what i mean i got a real successful you know um medical marijuana business you feel what i'm saying i'm on you know, a TV show that my man was telling me about growing up hip hop for five, six seasons going on now. We're filming for that now. I'm thankful for it. So it's a lot of things went outside of music. 
So that's why I say it's, it's weird how you look at it because he said, hey, you know what I mean? If they don't give it to you in the way that I got it with music, you know what I mean? If I was here, I'd be doing everything. So hey, why you can't go do everything with represent me? You feel what I'm saying? So, and that's what I did. You know what I mean? My medical marijuana is rich and ruthless. You see what I'm saying? It's not ruthless records, it's rich and ruthless. You know what I mean? I got a company. This is one of my artists, Latoya Lane from, you know, Bay Area. You know, on my the roster. Bay Area? Area. Oh, no. well, we from the Bay. Where you from, bro? Stop, so, oh, okay, yeah, we from the 510, you know what I'm saying? Oh, from Berkeley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Town business. What you doing this way? What's that? Man, it's a lot. You know what happened? I started rapping, right? I used to rap, right? And then uh, me and this guy right here made fifty dollars one day off of rapping. I never made any money rapping in the Bay. Yes. And I knew I was in the right motherfucking spot, even though it was fifty dollars. You right. hear me? Okay. But at the same time, I feel like the Bay Area, if you get in, it has its own community that thrives right. despite the rest of the world. Right. It's, it's kind of like special. we got our own language, yeah. our own culture. Right. Right. But we do need to expand. Haters. Out. Haters. It's too Hater. much. It's too, too much. much to yeah, put right, us right, in the same right, spot. Right. We gotta spread right. out because we're using the same <laughs> offense, right, defense right, right, against right. a motherfucker that got the same playbook. Yeah. We running the same playbook. We need to get I, out. But I love. I love it. Like I. I remember. Like my first performances where, were, where? were in Oakland Bay Area, ah. and they don't want to support you initially that's why i love that's it okay. that's why i love it right, yes right, right. i love it i love it because it challenges you as an artist and for myself like it literally right. lets me know yeah like they don't like if you are doing something they like they'll turn around and they'll be like yeah. okay hold on hold on but they are not initially like hey let's you know you gotta they you gotta stuff. prove your shit you know so right. i like the barrier because it's always challenging you know it makes me better and then also as i said it's its own community you, know, you don't have to you can make, like, i, I mean dealing with little e coming to la that's a different culture in itself and they want you to show up and show out too man la got the funk the bay got the mob right and they want to see some shit and they and they community based so how do you feel yourself fitting in all these different pieces? How what do you bring to the table that made E little E like, yo, I need her? You want me to take it? Wait, what? What's the question? How did you with you being from the Bay Area, how did you, you know, like what do you feel it? Well really, okay, I'm gonna tell you the story. I was she hit me up and she she posted something and I think it was you tagged me in it. Yeah. And I was like, cool, I like it. You know what I mean? Being a natural man, I'm like, oh, wow, this is sexy, cool. Right. Liked it, it tapped on it. You feel what I'm saying? She, I was right. like, you know, did a little comment. She was like, hey, she's like, damn, I've been trying to sit here and holler at you about some stuff. You know, me as a man, like, ah, oh, here you go. When does somebody want to holler at me about some motherfucking music? Right. Cool, she fine though. So cool, you feel right. what I'm saying? Me just being a typical man. When we met and, and we met in Vegas, and I think I kind of like blew her off to, you know, was doing parties, running around. And she's like, hey, oh, man, I'm really I trying was to. like, fuck him. It yeah, was, she was, she was yeah, I, I was. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, I was. He, he, it's not just kind of blew you me just, off. Like in a hotel room, like this. It's not just me. She came to one of my functions, a party. She came with her homegirls and everything. And okay. I'm like, all right, cool. You know what I mean? Just had her come out and party. And she, you know what I mean? And that night she was like, hey, you know what I mean? Whenever you get some free time, you know, let's, you know, let's sit down and talk. I want to talk some business with you. You know, me as a man, I'm like, man, it's what cool. Yeah, so I'm like really trying to, yeah, I'm like trying to run around. So, yeah, so in a real, so yeah, you know what I mean? I'm being a man, so she, uh, she sit here, she's like, hey, well, you know what? I kind of think I blew her off the next day. I had another party, a big party with Mr. Fab, with Mr. Fab that weekend, actually. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I hosted that, and she, she finally was like, you know what, I, like I'm kind of, she's telling me, you know, late, lately, I was like, cool on meeting you. And she's like, hey, well, you know, I'm finna leave, would you meet me at my room? I said, well, fuck it, now you talking. <laughs> so, so I was like, no, here we go. So, so she goes, she goes, and I'm like, yeah, cool. Go, and we're like, hey, you want me to meet downstairs? She's like, hey, well, you know, I actually really want to talk. We can meet upstairs. I'm like, man, now you're really talking. <laughs> so we go, and... You know, I'm, I'm making it quick, fast, and easy, and we sit there conversating, and she just lays it out on me like, "Hey, I just been trying to get at you to, cause I, 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 I want to anticipate to be a writer." That wasn't. That, no, this was not. A writer. This was not, a no, writer. Just, you know, right. Yeah. You didn't listen. Well, I don't. I'm going fast. I'm a lot high, but this is what attract. <laughs> this is what grabbed me. She didn't want to come and talk about being I'm an artist. For you. 
that this was the third time, the fourth time. This was uh, at Jesus levels. Christ. Yeah. No, 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 no. This was before levels. This was in Vegas. And this is when our first initial know. conversation. She says, I said, what? You know, about music. So, you know what I mean? And, and she was very respectful. So it's like, I didn't see a, a move in. Being a man, you feel what I'm right. saying? Like, hey, it's a curiosity. Killed the cat. And what do you want to talk about? And it wasn't about being an artist. It wasn't not about me as far as an, or anything or an attraction and like that. She's like, hey, I, I have a, a real drive and a passion for writing music. So I said, whoa, really? And I'm like, damn, why? You know what I mean? I didn't, have, I didn't work with a lot of people, just same as my father, you know what I mean? That, you know, co-wrote and helped me uh, with music. And I just had a vision of always still having my own, you know, writer that I could sit here. I go to studios, it's, it's big artists that, you know, at times they be, you know, writer's blog, you know, they need a writer. And I'm like, wow, I'm really, you really fucked me up. Like, shit, you feel me? And I'm thinking you finna come at me, you wanna rap, you wanna do this, you do this. So her, as far as being my artist, was my idea to say, hey, you have the appeal to do it. And you have the skills. But her passion was she wanted to write music. So you feel what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly, still her passion. So when she, when we initially met, how did she came over into it? I was like, whoa. Then I said, okay, well, let me put you to test. Now that's the story she's talking about. And I say, well, here. And she, you know, came back and she played me some shit that she really went and did her homework. I said, well, if you was writing something for me, let me hear it. Yeah, let me hear it. And she wrote some shit to her. I wouldn't even know she knows about my past yeah, and everything. Exactly right. And we really didn't know each other at this point in time. So I'm like, hey, okay, cool. And we became bro like a close brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? Kept it respectful and straight. And she you learned me and, 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 you know, like, damn. How were you able to switch it up though? Like switching, like you want to hit it, I'm being brother Casey. Oh, well, because I can't. You know what I'm saying? I really, it's like an artist. I work with her. Yeah, she threw her there. She had a, you know, she had her things, you know, and she, you know, she has a situation in her family. So it's like I was being respectful in my mind. I'm telling you, like my my man said, I'm just giving my honesty to you. I'm not a fake person. In my mind, I'm telling you, is like, whoa, you know what I was thinking the whole time, and you know, I mean, I joke with her and thinking, but it was like I didn't make no pass, you know, what I mean, and. She didn't sit here and grab or throw, you know, or grab anything or give that intention. It was just like, hey, well, damn, you know, you know, you just been an asshole. You kind of stood me up, this, that, and the other. But I'm just really want to talk to you because this is what I want to do. I called my fiance. And I'm like, fuck, you know. So she, you know, she has a do, you know. So she went. She's like, yeah, but it's still funny though. Yeah, all the way. You feel what I'm saying? 110. percent That's why I'm giving it to you, real. And I was like, that's hilarious. Why? Because this is what my mind was thinking. Like, shit, this is the fuck you want. What you want? You just want to rap or something, baby? We gonna rap a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? But no, I want to have a passion of writing. And I said, whoa, that really threw me off. And I said, wow, I have a lot of ideas and work for having my own in-house writer with my company. That's what I'm saying. It'll, it'll be it's bigger like, than yeah. just having one artist. And I'll have a, a like, lady. Can actually, and again, like, yeah. you know, she's, you know. She's and that speaks volumes to her because you know, you can send her into the lion's den. All the way. And, and, and she has is been. Be handled. With, the, the, with the, with the, you know, with the uh, people from June on the beat. You feel uh, what I'm saying? Yeah. She's been with Jay Stone in this camp. Okay. She's, you know, she's worked with uh, plenty of people. You feel right. what I'm saying? She could, she could tell you more of me, her, me than me herself. Uh, she and does. she's going there and it's like, she's in there fucking damn near 16, 12 hours and just getting to it. And you feel what I'm saying? Working with different saying. camps. To the artists that's listening or might pick this uh, interview up, she invested in herself. She didn't give up. Man. And, and it's harder for women to, in this industry just for the simple fact of what Lil E said. So if she's doing this, you can still do it, but she invested in herself. Real talk, real talk. And she didn't give up. When they, be like my homies be like, ah, oh, that's not E now. Like, you know what I mean? E yeah. younger? Oh yeah, he was definitely with that. With all oh, the no, I just, I, I, yeah, you lightweight capping right now because I just seen a video, I forgot. And you was in that front yard with the low rider. You was talking some gangster shit, <laughs> motherfucker. What is he? Now when the people said the braids, he had the braids. All like, that. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> what? It's about, it ain't over. You know what I'm saying? She's performing that tonight with me. But it's it's okay. So when you look at that, people sitting and say like, well, what do you give it? The the title of my my story I'm giving you is Yellow Brick Road to Compton. So so I have to so I have to take you down this brick road of what my life is, you feel what I'm saying? Of what, what, what came of this, you feel what I'm saying? We have a transition in it. There's times where it gets, you know, more, more mature, more say, lighter, but I'm taking you to the yellow brick road to Compton. This is how it started. When mama kicked me out, this is what we was on. You feel what I'm saying? This is the lifestyle that I was in. This is, this is me, you feel what I mean? And then, and why? Because it's really, that's the first real official video that I've done on myself. 
You feel yes, what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and like I say, the rest of the success of my life came outside of that, that I probably don't expose or some people see when they watch TV and listen to, but it, that's just crazy with how he laid that legacy for me to be able to do that. Because that only is the first official video as I get more mature and relax and everything. Damn, I gotta take you back down memory lane of what it really is. So we don't get it fucked up, you know what I'm saying? But hey, I'm cool, I love you. Love my brothers, everybody. You know what I mean? It's, we straight, we cool, don't take me there. We don't need to go there. <laughs> uh, yeah, you said don't take you there. Uh, Brianna, Latrice. Oh, my, <laughs> she's uh, my castmate on Growing Up Hip Hop. On uh, Growing Up Hip Hop. Yeah, which was years ago when she took me there, you know what I mean? She, had, she, and she tried to, she yeah. tried, but it didn't happen, it didn't work. No dude in there wanted to fight, and I'm not finna sit here and, and continuously fight. She didn't have a representative. No, the representative she told to move me, did move me and when i had to look like in the corner of my eye like hey you better knock me out i got my back towards you it better be a sleeper because if you if you do anything that is just a clip of my back of my head my chin it's over with it's over with you feel what i'm saying and i'm by myself so i i'm i'm really on the tents yeah very much this it's her birthday party i'm there with cast members so my cast members if it go up yeah i know that you're gonna re respect me but i need to go up with my soldiers you feel what I'm saying? And if I'm by myself, then I'm just a wolf by myself in a function. Right. So if you hit me, I'm really going to go up. Why? Because I'm in defense mode. You feel what I'm saying? I'm, yeah. I'm, you know what I mean? I'm kind of just, who knows how many fits going to come with it. But it better be better work because one of y'all going out. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And then she threw the drink right in my face. Uh -huh. You know, now I'm really thinking like, he, he hey, really, he really better drop me. Man, I was, hey, I was waiting for the swing. Like if anybody hit me up again, you better go to work right now. Other than that, with my eyes open, I'm finna get the crack. He had it planned you know out in his head, like, all right. Because yeah, it happened. He, he was like, oh, oh I she planned out. Did yeah, that's it, my though. uncle taught me that. My daddy brother. He's, a, you know what I'm saying, a weapon specialist in, 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 you know, in the Air Force. So, and my daddy, they took, they followed, you know, Bruce Lee. So people don't even know he took, all you know what I'm saying, off the, all, and you understand that, brother. You understand it. From my daddy's era, you yeah. all, they all knew how to get down with yeah. the feet. He put yeah. me in it until he passed away. So, you know, just being, hum I mean, just being able to control myself and combat. Oh, I could do that, and I'm gonna think about ten ways I'm gonna do something in here before a motherfucker get to crack it with me. You feel what I'm saying? All the way. I got to be. All my life, I, I was living on the edge. You gotta think. Growing up, you think people killed my father. You feel what I'm saying? Why? As a young kid, that's where gang banging came from. Oh well, shit. We just, I'm just finna fool turn this way. Why? Because he died all of a sudden. But then as a kid, you can see Magic Johnson still alive. My daddy had more money, this yeah, yeah, his man. Do you believe in uh, conspiracy theories? It, it, at a point in time, I grew up to sit here and understand that, you know what I mean? But only God knows now, you feel what I'm saying? That was something that was too high profile that wouldn't leak, you feel what I mean? They gave it too many avenues. You, you, gave it, you gave it a sense of, just like anybody else, what's the normability of this individual does? Oh, let's make him die for it. Oh, he flies all the time, he plane crash. Yeah. Oh, he does he, certain just yeah, drugs. Yeah, he's yeah, overdosed. Yeah, right, 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 right. Oh, he, you know, knocking me girls. Oh, you have this. You feel what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. That's what I'm not stupid in that sense to understand and throw that out there to you. Yeah. So when it comes down to that, and I, I know, you know, individuals even know it and me speaking on it because my sister did a, uh, a documentary on it about, you know, wanting to find out how they want to see her and do that. It's like, hey, we, we, you're searching for a ghost right now. You feel what I'm saying? Only God knows. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? Searching for it's a ghost. It's incredible now, that you got, you got to that point, though. Yeah, yeah it took a long time, bro. Personally, long time. that would fuck me up. Yeah. So you imagine know? why I'm in the streets. Exactly. Yeah. It was fucking no therapy. It would be a lot of these white rich kids and rich black kids get therapy. I didn't have no therapy. None of us had therapy. Yeah, so the streets, the all the time. The streets was my therapy, and I'm gonna go get it and go get it and and and, and do it all I want. I have big homies tell me why are you doing what you're doing. You have no reason to. You know what I mean? Your yeah, daddy was my partner. Get away from here. And nobody understood what I'm yeah, going through. Going nobody. I was talking to Sativa earlier, and I was like, did this outside looking in on some? You know what I'm saying? I don't know shit. I was like, did people try to mistreat? Lil E, just a simple fact, like, yo, you need to be like this, you need to be like Oh, nah, my, my big homies, all that. It, the dudes that weren't from my side, red, blue, green, on a purple, Hispanics, Southsiders, anything, respected me off of my father. And only guided me a certain way or even looked out for me in a respectful way of the nature of him. So you feel what I'm saying? It's like, at a point in time, I used to sit here and, you know, hypothetically think, you feel I'm like, damn, you're like, you really protected me while you up there. But it's like, as you get more wiser, you understand it's God. God says, I I'm going to be with the fatherless and the child, the motherless. And I was fatherless. You feel what I'm saying? So he protected me and kept me out. There's plenty of times them bullets should have should have went through. There's plenty of times this. Hands wise, I could do what I do. But once you come with that instrument, there's plenty of times I've been in situations like that and asked myself, wow. You feel what I'm saying? Whoa, I, I, it, it, I, I have a different 
call it in life. You, you may, you, yeah, you definitely so, got a mouthpiece because you got up out that situation. All the way, definitely. Some kind of go. But, <laughs> so that's just, that's just that, you feel what I'm saying? But I didn't have, like I said, I didn't have no therapy. So psychologically that did mess me up to understand what happened. What's this? You know, the world will take you and turn it, and everybody knows the stories. It goes from either being my stepmother, to being his friends, his label mates, yeah, right. to being the person everybody who created him. Me. You feel what I'm saying? To, you know what I mean? Oh, wow, it really just did happen. Oh, go talk to this woman, and she's the only woman that he was messing with. All kind of shit in your mind and everything as you go on this way. Right. And then everybody's his friend. I was just telling JoJo on my on my on my on my um, on my on my show, my cat, my it's my, my cast member, it's my brother, it's my homie. I said it's a difference that I can imagine what you living with, because people could tell you past stuff. Oh yeah, I used to be your pop's friend, as opposed to him having his father in a situation he's going through now, and people, yeah, people being like, yeah, your dad can vouch that he didn't fuck with these people. You know, you can see that a lot of fake people might come just want to get under your dad. I don't imagine if my daddy was alive, who would want to get under me? Hey, we just trying to get to your daddy. You feel what I'm saying? So I don't have that because he's not here. I got the ones that, oh, that was my partner. This was this, this was that. So I said, hey, it's weird how I get older and wiser and I think about things like that in the nature. You know what I'm saying? Because the situation he's going through, somebody's acting a certain way just to get underneath his daddy. You feel what I'm saying? I said, damn, that could be real fake. And I imagine that. You feel what I'm saying? Other people will be like, hey, I would respect it. We want to respect. But man, that was my partner. You know, me and him went to high school together, man. Your daddy was this. He used to be at my house, man. I gave your daddy this. And matter of fact, he gave me half a roofless and this, that, and the other. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, really? You feel? <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Yeah. So imagine all the shit like that going through me being young. So psychologically, yeah, running to the streets was a getaway of, you know what I mean, living a life of this. I, I went through high school, people not knowing who I was for two or three years. Yeah, right. and people ask me, it's like, hey, was that what you wanted? And they just, it was a different city. So yeah. they don't know, they don't know. I'm not gonna hide from who, who I am. Yeah. So I get it when my kids be like, dad, do I gotta walk in the mall with you? You're gonna take all these pictures? I get that, you know what I'm saying? Cause me, I want to hide away from negative aspect. My kids just be like, you know, like, you know, they're not in the negative aspect, just like, I just really want to go in there and chill with you and don't want these people bothering you. To you, to you, you're just dad. Oh, I'm, yeah, that's real talk. Yeah. <laughs>
you, you know, they just wanted, now the system wanted to take advantage of me. And it's crazy because my parole, my, the, the, the head of the parole board said, she got at me, she got at me crazy. And I was like, well, you got your nerves to be talking about you. She says, no, listen, look at what your name is. You gave them a reason to sit here and try to do this to you. And I was like, wow, she's right. You feel right. what I'm saying? Like, she really is right. Regardless of what she said, she's, she's stumping me, you know, hard, but she's stumping me hard because she cares. Yeah, she definitely did. Yeah, real talk. Instead of having aggression and egotistical, yeah. Was that the click moment? Well, uh, that was, it wasn't a click moment. It was, that moment was the turning moment to sit here and say on all boards, they would try to do something, give them no inch, you know, and they said, take nothing from me. You know, they took me from my kids for a year, you know what I mean? And that was fucked up because I went for a parole hearing, uh, you know, a, a probation hearing. And he put me in custody then at that time. So I'm telling them I'm going to be right back. I was an everyday daddy. I was taking them to school, dropping them off, picking them up, you know what I mean? Their mom worked, and I was just, you know, my three, my three little ones. So every, every time, I'm doing play dates. I'm listening to other women talk about their husbands, because why? I'm the daddy that's there all the time, and they see every day, and like, we going to play dates together. I'm like, shit, it's me and six women. You know what I mean? So I was doing that, and for them, me to tell them I'll be right back this Friday, and when, and then I don't come home for a year. You feel what I'm saying? And so their mom told them I went to China on a tour and they're like hey so they, and for years it got got a little rocky for me to ever take a trip or go overseas to do work because it's like are you going to be gone this long i just went to pakistan and my daughter broke down crying you feel what i'm saying like i don't want you to go you know what i mean i went to turkey and pakistan three weeks ago and she my that's my 14 year old she broke down with them and the other just a thought process like how long are you going to be gone like maybe like maybe two and a half weeks. Yeah, that that is some games because I'm not going to Turkey or Pakistan. Oh my goodness, yeah, it was it was different. It was different, bro. <laughs> but nothing. I also wanted to talk about because since we have your artist here, how you were able to spit a verse and get a million dollars for one verse, basically a record deal. Me, what I you talking about? <laughs> how can, are you walking around here still spitting verses for a million dollars? For a million dollars, I wish. <laughs> I wish. Hey, they possibly can't turn it that. They, they got to add up. So it might be a sum of verses, you know what I mean? But back then, yeah, I did. It was one verse, bro, on, on Games Mixtape, man. It got me a record deal. That is you know what I'm saying? I didn't have no, like, it, it, it was crazy because the executives was like, you know what I mean? Like, where was your demo? Or, you know, play the demo. When, when Jermaine became the, uh, <laughs> the, the head of the urban side, he was like, where's his demo at? Like, oh, he got this off a of verse, off of somebody else's mixtape. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I did do. And you know, she got she got capability of do that. Yeah, she got the capability of doing that. So, you know, I mean, we'll see, but she's she's working now hard in the studio. So we'll see. So the game, I was listening to uh, a few interviews real quick. Huh? Okay. Uh, I was listening to uh, the, you know, what you were talking about the game and all that. You guys had that not I wouldn't say an issue. But, you know, when you guys have seen issue. each other since, yeah, it was you, an said, issue. You, you yeah. said you haven't spoke to him specifically in detail about the issue. I haven't. Did you ever get to do that yet? No, I haven't. Interviews? You know, it's all just mutual and love. do you think that the game, I think that he should know. You know what he I'm definitely saying? should. I he think definitely he knows. Should. It's crazy because. It doesn't need to be told. It's crazy because that track that he talked about, it ain't over. Game, game got it clear, clear for me. Because it was his beat, it was a beat he had, working with a producer he had, and he cleared it. And literally our conversation be like, hey, what's up, cuz? And this is him saying cuz, you know, we just, this is our, our bond. And then I ran it down to him what I needed. He's like, E is nothing, whatever you need, tell me. Just give me, send me the song or tell the producer to hit me and, and send it. And our respect level had always like just been that. So it's never been a time to bring up the past when everything was going smooth. But when individuals ask me about it, as a man, it just makes me say it in an interview, regardless if he looks at it or not, or his fans or his family or who knows, even if his sons or kids, you know what I mean? Like, hey, that issue, and then the other, Eric was in the wrong because I didn't know, we didn't know on what sides of what was what being said. It was in the midst of the just managers. Managers was dictating what is what, you feel what I'm saying? And then at that time, yeah, you know, at that time, I just went off, I'm, I'm, I was active Eric. You feel what I'm saying? I was little E, you feel what I'm saying? So at that time, I just went off like, oh, now nah, you want to know some real, like, Compton, who runs this? And I was just going to act a fool. Why? Because I you didn't know wrong, I can't though, go. But, like, I think that he understands your point of view, too, because when you guys saw each other after that, a few yeah. times, if it was a real deal, it would have been brought up, you know what I'm saying, about the situation. Yeah. So oh, I yeah, we had a lot, we had a like lot of times untold, where it was, like, it was, did, it was heat. Whatever. Yeah, it was heat until we had a sit-down. And then from that sit-down, we still had a little 
few ups and downs. Really disagree. Yeah, and then it just you know got to it. As I, I, res I respect his brother, I respect a lot of people who's with him. Should have some of my family work for him for since he started. You feel what I'm saying? So you know, mutually, it's like you know, what are we doing? What is the point of sitting there and seeing this? You know what I'm saying? It got to the. It just retarded. You feel well, what I'm well, that issue you won because what I say, Jay Z won the battle between Jay Z and Nas because he signed Nas. Now you won that because the game has your pops tatted on him. So how could you? You know what I'm saying? In a function with that, you yeah, feel yeah, what I'm saying? So you you, you win that. I, I am that. You can have that. You can be the prince. You feel me? But I'm going to take, you know what I'm saying? I'm here. I'm etched in stone. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to talk to you about the, the doc series that you was trying to put together. How is that coming along? Oh, very good. Very good. I, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. It was something I left out. But basically, that's, that's uh, just give you a touch of what it is. It's, 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 my, it's my point of view. In my eyes, his son's eyes, my father's life story. You know what I mean? And You know what I mean? So we're going from the family to the everyday bodyguards to the best friends before in the streets to individuals that really know them and really put in work with them. So it's, 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 it's in the works now. It's crazy, it's because uh, I'll, I'll just drop it out. Um, uh, well, the, the first talks that I have for, for production is with, uh, with Irv Gotti, you know what I mean? With his new deal that he did, and uh, I kind of just reached out to an OG from <laughs> Suge's area, which is my homie, and because like I say, it's just mutual respect, it's my big bro term, and reached out to him and said, hey, you know what I mean? I, I see Urs get into the TV movie world. You know, I got a story. That should be a series. You should do a series. series. And that's exactly what I said, a TV world. So TV world and make it as a series. You feel what I'm saying? And, uh, and he made the phone call in less than 10 minutes. Irv Gotti returned the phone call. I was like, you know what I mean? Let, that's, he inspired me. He was, I recently, yeah, yeah. He called me, actually. I was, I was with my daughter on the track meet. And he, I still got to call him, matter of fact, um, soon to get into Atlanta because he's doing his stuff in Atlanta and just really just get out there and just talk to him and see how we all started. That's how fast he wanted to move. So you're right. You know, where are you at? <laughs> where are you at? So. Well, how do you feel about uh, Snoop Dogg uh, regaining uh, control of... Uh, Death Row Records. That's beautiful for him. him, man. That's beautiful for him, man. That's real beautiful for him. I respect it. You feel what I'm saying? That's if anything, you know, leading the right way. He was a kickoff because you know, I mean, let's let's be realistic. When it started, you know, I mean, they didn't have nothing but a producer and this rapper, and he kicked it off. You feel what I'm saying? Snoop was hard. You know, and not say he ain't hard, but you know, my OG is my OG. He getting money, but you know what I mean? Snoop was Snoop was hard, despite as a kid. And that's what you people ask is like, hey, when that was going on, oh yeah, yeah, it was this way. You know, we felt this way, and I joke with Snoop about it. But you know, you couldn't deny you, cause he was hard. <laughs> you, okay, he was best, hard. Best rap this record of all time. It's like that's, that's it's like when people see it's coming up on the 50th anniversary <laughs> hip hop. So people ask me, it's like, hey. Who ruled this at this time? And it's hard for me to say, but then Lazy was like, it's fair for you to say. And I, well, I get you true. So I'm gonna what go you with you, you, real Compton think? City G's. It's, uh, it's my city. It's, it's, it's you know, it, it's a real certified, authentic individual giving you what it is. How can you get any better than that? It's nobody standing behind something that was, you know what I'm saying, just like, you know, put together or I'm just portraying this way for the world. No, this individual is like this, rapping what he talking about and who he talking about, this is what it is in they city. You feel what I'm saying? How could you do that? You got a lot of motherfuckers do that next to you, know, end up shot up and all in their ass. You, you, well, you gonna come in my hood and videotape it? No, well, I'm gonna go to the whole city from side to side, uh, your side, this side, and any other side, and dish you about it. And I'm really, this is where I'm from. This is what I can do. I can actually really walk through this whole, you know, video set and shoot without a bodyguard. That's, that's the real king of Compton right there. Yeah, Oh, okay, because really it's a funny video. story about that video about the guy holding the sign, Ezell. That is hilarious how Ezell, we're going to show the clip on here. But uh, Ezell was explaining how he couldn't do that video even though he wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> so they had to hear somebody else. Yeah, do I actually did a movie with Ezell. I did an action, action scene with Ezell, and uh, I got the hookup too with Master P's uh, movie. So in, yeah. in my scene with Fatboy SSC and Ezell, I'm grabbing Ezell, yeah. checking him about my money. <laughs> So, and then he shares that stories with me as well, man. But rest in peace, God bless his soul. Blessing, blessing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we covered a lot of good things. Is there anything that you might want to... Oh, yeah, you, uh, you recently hooked up with DJ Yellow. Oh, yeah, but I mean, I've been with DJ Yellow since I put dirt on my father's grave. Let Why do you call him you know Uncle Ruckus? Because uh, it's my uncle and, you know, he's older. So then he, he's a changed man. He's saved now. So you got to think DJ Yellow from what people... Yeah, so it's a lot of stuff that he might just... Yeah, not just, just, you know, it's not his old lifestyle. 
So, you know, he'll be in his own mood, and I'll be like, ah, just don't act like Uncle Ruckus. You just, you know. Bible thumping everywhere, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like a motherfucker. Don't you look at him over there with them, with them things out. Ain't nothing but seeing over there, Eric. That ain't nothing but seeing. That ain't nothing but seeing, Eric. You, you better be careful. But then again, your daddy back in the day is, oh, man. <laughs> Woo, he would have loved that. Like, <laughs> So that's my that's my family. That's my real, you know, what I mean, Un uncle. That's you know, really family. And uh, we've been together, like I said, since I put dirt on my father's grave. He's been in my life. He's my my little brother's real godfather. So Yella's just been all the way around and been around through thick and thin, through it all. And you know, the person who took me across this world. I've been everywhere with Yella, touring with Yella. After the movie came out, it's not a place we didn't go. I mean, Compton kid to see her say he'd been to Vietnam. It's crazy. Bali is crazy. You feel what I'm saying? You know, France, you know what I'm saying, all through the UK, you feel what I mean, Australia, yeah, with Yella on some other stuff. Well, one more question before you go. Um, you just hooked up with, um, is that Lazy Bone? That's my big brother as well. Been my been around since then. He's on the cast as far as well as growing up hip hop. Okay, now, y'all was talking for a second. I want to know who gives the best stories about your pops? Who's, give, who's giving you the best stories, the best, the best one about pops? Uh, well, I got to give it to Yella because Yella going to tell you, I'm going to just keep it real, Yella going to tell you the first piece on the road type stories. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, the then Yella going to tell you about the first piece and who, who's the first one yeah. to get your daddy the first yeah. situation on the road. Oh, you feel what I'm saying? All that. Yeah. Yella, gonna, Yella could go back to them stories uh, all the way when it started. So I got to give it to Yella. He, yeah, Yella gave me all of them and he is the best. So you're going to get raunchy to this to that from beginning to the end from all the way from 86 85 up on hey, like yeah yellow don't, don't get me wrong i mean yeah lazy got some great stories of, of of you know you know lazy looks at my daddy like his daddy you feel what i'm saying so he's like my big we kids are easy you know when he talked to me like man we all easy kids you know what i mean he was my daddy too you know when he get there and he'll tell me some good stories that 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 stamps on their history you know things that they've been through you feel what i'm saying of them being only 15 years old coming out here shell shock because we was rapping your daddy next thing you know he put us on a bus to come here you know how fucked that how that fucked us up i like man you can't imagine it's a beautiful story and they got their movie coming out you feel what i'm saying but uh nobody could be better than yella yella gonna give you it all that's yeah, love it all. man he's gonna give you all. hey real talk a little easy bro like you know i think we got we really wanted to focus on trying to get a different side of your interview today than the ones we studied. I think we got. It oh was man, appreciate y'all. definitely did. You know y'all definitely pulled some other shit out. Yeah, I, 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 I like. I, 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 I had fun. You see, see, I'm sorry, chilling. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And Randy's tattoo artist made, uh, made you something right here. I don't know if you want to hold it up. Oh, oh, this is this right here. Oh, y'all bullshitting. This is me. Yes, sir. Oh, this shit was hard. I'm sitting there looking at it. My what? My sister gonna cry. Man, what? That's hard, bro. And I had, I had, I wish I could have got it. I got the. Um, they came out with a comic book. It was um, Easy E with Dr. Dre when they um, slapped the, the radio host that time. Oh, wow. I, I have the comic book, bro. <laughs> I just don't have it on my person. I didn't have it out here. Yeah. But I got that comic book, bro. That shit is dope as fuck. That's like, real. That's and, real, brother. And that shit dope. Uh, like, what's the name of your tattoo artist? Joey. Joey, I see it on the back. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Okay. That's right. Shout out to Joey. That's real. <laughs> Much love, brother. This is lovely. Oh yeah, my family gonna love this. You did your thing. you, you know what I'm saying? And then does your artist want to give a shout out to the world? Oh, but yeah, she know what she want to do. Good yeah, human squad. Yeah. So Go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, so find me Toy Toy Lane on Instagram. Um, yeah, just keep up. Like, I'm about to release stuff soon of my own as an artist, but as he said and as we discussed i'm passionate about writing and eclectic like i love different stuff so just keep up with me i, I also i also yeah i talk i talk to people on instagram i'm not one of them that's just like you support me come holla at her uh, yeah you gonna like her pictures like on there that. shit <laughs> <laughs> You gonna get arthritis in your thumb hey she gets you she show all them body that you she gets you over there and be like Let's turn the page, verse, verse, <laughs> chapter 12, Ezekiel. <laughs> What's all these candles and shit? Yeah. The fuck? What is your ass doing? I was just looking at you. I was just looking at you post the good, the good stuff on Instagram. I didn't know I was coming over here for this. I see your ankles right yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
You're going to walk out that motherfucker going to her, it's liking her pics. Fuck this. This is most I'm going to get. You wonder why she want me to hit her on Instagram. You go too far, like, months and months, and, and, you, keep, and you like the ones from far. Yeah, that's creepy. That's yeah. That's creepy. Yeah. The rule is, like, three at the most. Three at the most. Oh, they going to like, you going to go to her shit going all the way down. Like, well, my damn. Well, my damn. Ah, uh, my man, he's... Or Lil E. We Lil E, there you Lil go. E. Oh, yeah, we locked in now, so you stuck in Lil E. I'm we know you now. L E, not you Lil E. I'm gonna shorten that shit up. L E. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, but I we really, really appreciate you being on the It's all love. Appreciate show. that, brother. You know, it's much love and respect to you and the artists as well. You know, sure. and you gotta kill it tonight. So appreciate you know it, brother. Let's get Most it definitely. You know, anything you want to say to the camera? Oh, man, you know what it is, man. Growing Up Hip Hop coming at you again uh, this in the summer. You feel what I mean? Uh, like my man said, and I appreciate the lock-in and love, but uh, I'm giving you, you know what I mean, and hopefully it'll be a movie series connecting with uh, Irv Gotti and Murder, Inc. to sit here and give you this point of view of my eyes and my father's real-life story. And um, again, Richard Ruthless, Cannabis out there, Richard Ruthless Records, Latoya Lane, you know, Kiki Smooth, Compton Musa, you know what I mean, Baby Easy, which is my little brother, Derek Wright. And uh, we're just gonna keep it moving to keep this legacy grinding and going for you, man. Y'all know how to find me, littlee.com, or richardruthless.com, and everything we got going on. Yee, let's get it. It's the 411 Show, baby! Yes, yeah, sir! Most definitely. 411, much love, baby.